third generation. So you have there's no hope in saving an animal, but you can prevent future cases. And of course, you got a thiamine deficiency, so you can treat it by what? Treat it with what? Thiamine injection, okay? <coughs> Let me, I'm, I'm gonna skip this, I'm gonna come back to this. Let me come, get some of this. But you, you see the way these legs look here, they can't move because they're sort of paralysis of those side nerve. That's what it would look like. Whether it's marix or thyroid deficiency um, or the stinks disease. Give me just a minute. paralysis. Carol toe paralysis. And I'm going to now because it looks a lot like thiamine deficiency. This is vitamin B1, 2. Vitamin B1 is thiamine. And vitamin B2 is riboflavin. I often call this curl toe paralysis. Curl toe paralysis. Again, just like thiamine deficiency, it's going to cause damage to what nerve? Sciatic nerve. Now, it may be some other nerve, but the major one is going to be sciatic nerve. And whereas we talk about thiamine deficiency, we said it can be any age because it's usually something in the feed. And this one, they're usually just young. Basically, you can get the uh, toes are going to be curved, medial curving on the toes, and paralysis of the peripheral nerve, especially the sciatic nerve. <coughs> With all of these, especially the young ones, you get a very high mortality rate because the chicks can't what? They can't move. And when they can't move, they can't get a seed of water. Of course, you can treat them by giving them what? Vitamin B2 in the feed. Yes? I won't blame this on interest in buying a truck when I was making the slide out. Okay? I want some here, let's talk about chick dermatitis. Chick dermatitis. And this is due to panathenic acid deficiency. These lesions basically are going to be on the underside of the feet, on the underside of the feet, okay? On the sole of the feet, okay? This is, you 
kind of any age chick, and what you see, there are going to be a lot of scabs, especially under the feet, but you can see them also in the eyes, the vent, the mouth. But most of them are going to be under the feet, like scabby feet. And of course, you're going to treat it by giving it what? Panatitic acid in the feet. Yeah. Do you supplement the feed? Does this get better? Is it just like everything else? It's this one, because of the nature of the lesion, if you treat them, most of them will resolve. Because it doesn't cause permanent damage, per se. Okay? Thank you. I'll show you just. Well, it's at any age, but like most of these, they're going to be probably young animals. Young animals, yes. And, all right. And this is what they look like. See this foot here? Like little scabs. When I was a kid, we used to have a, a barn. You know, a barn that got one top down, down like this, and then it come down to another one, something like that. As kids, we used to haul up there on the tin roof. We used to go up there and jump off the lower one, about 10 feet. And some days you get hot and you get up there and get some new kid, he was afraid to jump, but he's on a hot tin roof. And believe me, their feet look like this sometime before they jump down. That's why I always think about panatic acid deficiency. Hot tin roof. Okay. I think we got one group of diseases left to talk about. And these are, there are three diseases that are caused by vitamin E, sedative deficiency in chickens. And these are the three we're going to talk about. The first one is encephalomalacia, because you get necrosis in the brain, particularly the cerebellum, and they call it, as only people in the chicken industry can call it, crazy chick disease. Crazy chick disease. Basically, now, when we talk about these three diseases, they occur at different ages. In these, they're about two to four weeks of age, and they're deficient in basically vitamin E. Okay? And then that way because of sometimes they get all this polyunsaturated fat oil in the feed, which is going to prevent what? The absorption of vitamin E in these young chicks. see where it's going to be attacked to. But it's a various number of CNS signs. When you do a necropsy, it does not affect the cerebrum for the most part. It's just the cerebellum. That's why you get so much attacked to. Red hemorrhagic cerebellum. Like most of them, once they get damaged to the cerebellum, there's no recovery. You would give them um, uh, vitamin E in the feed, prevent it from affecting other chicks, or you remove that feed if it's got a lot of pollen and saturated fats in it, a lot of fish oil. Okay? Okay. You 
see here, this is the normal cerebellum, normal cerebrum, and chicken brain. And then you see here, the cerebrum looks fairly normal, but the cerebellum is what? Hemorrhagic and red. And that's typically what you see in these two week old uh, patients. And these are some of the terminal signs that you typically see with them. <laughs> this is the disease that nearly got me fired because I told a joke in class one day about this. Okay. No. The joke was, I think it was class of 98, I think. One guy came in, and they, the seniors took class that year, and they would come in, and so he came in, and some of them were still out treating, because it was an eight o'clock class, and they came in, and I said, we're gonna talk about crazy chickens eating thing. And he said, is that what my girlfriend has? <laughs> so, I, I had seen him out with some, some local girl, okay? <laughs> and I thought that was his girlfriend. So when I show this slide here, I told him, I went probably 15 minutes later, then I showed this slide and I said, so John, and that was his name, your girlfriend does not have crazy chickens eat because I know your girlfriend. She's a friend of mine. And you see, the chick has a cerebellar problem. Your girlfriend has a cerebral problem. About, <laughs> about that time, someone hit me with an eraser. Because he was dating somebody in class that I know <laughs> So, apparently she told the dean that I was talking about her in class. <laughs> so, whenever you go to the audience, don't tell a joke that may affect anybody in the audience, okay? <laughs> okay. Now, there's another group of diseases. The first one is the crazy chick. The second one is exudative diathesis. This is a diet that's deficient insulin. And I'm just going to say all of them. I say vitamin E insulin deficiency. Okay? These chicks are about six to eight weeks of age. They are about six to eight weeks of age. Whereas in crazy chick disease, they were what? Two to four. But these are six to eight weeks of age. is muscular dystrophy. So we got crazy chick disease, exudative diathesis, and now we got muscular dystrophy. 
So it gets on again, deficiency of vitamin E. This occurs in adult layers. Adult layers, this occurs in. And basically what you get here is atrophy of the breast. You got an adult layer of chicken, which doesn't have much breast to begin with. And when they get this, you get atrophy of the breast muscle. What you're gonna treat it with? Vitamin E supplementation. Okay? So those are the three diseases caused by vitamin E insulin deficiency. Crazy chick disease, what, two to four weeks of age, primary <coughs> cerebellum, you're going to see a taxi. Okay? Use this something in the feed that's inhibiting the absorption of vitamin E. Okay? Then it was X day diathesis, six to eight weeks of the six to eight weeks of age. The affected thighs, they'll be swollen and yellow. And then adult muscular dystrophy, you're going to get atrophy of breast muscle. Okay? And again, treatment with vitamin E. I want to go back to this one slide we had earlier. And this is explaining the three forms of vitamin E deficiency in chicken. Number one is self malacia, also known as what? Present chick. What age? And then x day is diathesis, what? Yellow thighs, and yellow swollen thighs, and these are what age? And this one is what? Muscular dystrophy of adults, and you see atrophy of the uh, breast muscle. Okay? Do we have any questions on nutrition uh, you know, and fitness? Yes. Um, so, why is there such a difference? Yes. It, it's sort of when they're introduced to it, and and different tissues tend to be more susceptible at, at different ages. Yeah. So it's just the same type deficiency, just at what age? Yes. Yes. Okay. You have a question? Okay.